I'll be reviewing the Feiyutec A2000 gimbal with the additional dual hand grip. Hey what's up ladies and gentlemen, I'm Ines Alea and today it's Filmmaking Friday. It's a nicely designed and well built gimbal that does what it claims, stabilizing your footage. But how good does it actually stabilize and is it easy to set up and use? Let's find out. Feature wise the Feiyutec A2000 isn't that rich with options. But you can't expect a handheld gimbal to do much more than stabilizing your footage and having control over the movement of your gimbal. Which is actually all you need. You can use the gimbal in 5 different ways, vertical, horizontal and inverted when holding it in a single handed or horizontal and inverted with a dual grip. When changing orientations it follows along nicely unlike my other gimbals I have been using in the past but don't do this too fast because otherwise the gimbal might have some trouble recognizing this mode you want to use. It offers 5 different modes, panning mode, the panning and tilting mode, rotate horizontal 180 degrees which is basically like a selfie mode and then the auto rotation mode and initialization. Switching between the different modes is just a matter of pressing the function button a number of times with the first mode being one press and so on. This button also acts as the power on and off switch. The first mode panning is the default one. In this mode the tilting and rolling axes are fixed and the gimbal will smooth out any movement on those directions. The second mode is panning and tilting. In this mode only the rolling axis is fixed meaning that the gimbal will follow slowly in the pitch direction. This can be useful if you want to do a smooth reveal shot like a crane kind of movement. The speed of the tilt follow can be adjusted through the app. Thirdly we have an option to rotate the camera 180 degrees allowing you to create a stabilized selfie footage. Next up there is the ability to create a motion time lapse in the auto rotation mode. When selecting this mode you need to tell the gimbal in which position you want the camera to start and where to end. You simply hold the camera and point it in the direction you want. Don't worry about frying the motors, it knows what you're doing. After selecting the starting position you press the function button once and then you can select the end position. After pressing the function button once more the gimbal will actually immediately return to its starting position and will start the time lapse. You can modify the duration of the time lapse without using the app. It's also possible to connect your camera with a shutter release cable in order to allow the gimbal to take photos at a certain interval. Also adjustable through the app. To activate the continuous shooting you have to press the shutter button at least 3 seconds. Lastly it's possible to initialize the gimbal by pressing the function button 5 times. This will reinitialize the gimbal, a blue LED will inform you about the mode you're currently in. You also have a trigger button allowing you to lock the gimbal meaning that it won't follow any panning or tilting movements. This can be done by holding down the button. By pressing the button two times you can reset the position of the gimbal to its initial position. Apart from moving the camera with your hand movement it's also possible to use a joystick which is located above the function button. The joystick allows you to tilt or pan the camera. Via the app you can adjust the sensitivity of this joystick allowing you to fine tune it to your needs. The last button to be found is the shutter button allowing you to take a photo or start and stop a video recording. Another feature is the ability to manually change the tilt axis of the camera. You can do this by holding the camera in the desired direction for about half a second after that the gimbal will stabilize the camera in the selected tilt angle. Balancing the gimbal might be difficult at first but after some tries you will get the hang of it. It's a matter of following the right steps and taking your time but like I said after some tries it will become like a second nature to you. Don't rush the step though because it could damage the motors or reduce the gimbal performance. Also make sure that you rebalance the gimbal after switching lenses as it will affect the balance. You also don't need any tools in order to balance this gimbal which is nice to see if you're on a shoot you don't need any extra tools to actually rebalance your entire gimbal. To further reduce balancing time you can use markers placed on the three axes, write down the corresponding measurements per camera setup so you can quickly balance a certain payload in the future. But honestly I don't follow this step I just go ahead and balance it from scratch every single time because it doesn't take that long. 
The stabilization of gimbal is good and reliable, initialization is quick and after balancing you're good to go. The gimbal can carry payloads up to 2500 grams but the gimbal still stabilizes with ease. One minor thing I found is the presence of some micro vibrations. It really depends on what camera and lens you are using. You can reduce these vibrations by walking in a different way than you normally would by kind of going into a squat position and running like that. It will smooth out every movement of your feet. This is a typical movement that many cameramen actually use. The gimbal can't remove all the vibrations on its own unless you're using something like an easy rig. So practice on your walking and check for yourself to remove the micro vibrations. What also could help is having in body stabilization such as my GH5 camera and while I'm using that I have no vibrations whatsoever it's better smooth footage also if you have a stabilized lens like the 12 to 35 millimeters from Panasonic it also has a great image stabilization feature combine this with the in body from the GH5 combined with the gimbal you have the most bird smooth footage available. I won't recommend using a lens longer than 50 millimeters or the 35 millimeter equivalent because then the shaking is very noticeable. I did a running test. Also shooting in a higher shutter speed will help you if you have any mistakes while doing this gimbal shot. You can still go and stabilize it afterwards in post but just make sure the shutter speed is just high enough so you don't have too much motion blur which can mess with the warp stabilizer. While a single handed gimbal might sound lighter and easier to use it's still something you wouldn't be doing for the whole day. Although I really prefer working with a single gimbal instead of a big kind of gimbal because it just takes too much space. Especially when used with heavier payloads, remember that the gimbal itself weighs about 1100 grams without any camera, so if you add a camera of 2500 grams, it becomes quite heavy to hold an entire day. I would recommend using both hands to limit the stress on one arm. Another option is also to use a dual hand grip to further reduce the stress on your arms. But again, my setup is quite light. I use the Panasonic GH5 together with the 12 to 35 millimeter from Panasonic, so everything together doesn't weigh that much. The build quality and design. The gimbal is made from a high quality aluminium magnesium alloy giving it a very premium and sturdy feeling. The dual grip also feels very solid and is made from the same material. The grips itself are coated with a rubber like material in order to improve the grip you have with your hands. It really makes it different when compared to the smooth aluminium. Design wise the gimbal looks like a really high end stabilizer. I really like the red accents on the otherwise all black design which you see very often in high end products such as the GH5S and so on. I really like this kind of red accent. It just adds some professionalism to it and it really looks cool. You can also mount accessories to it like LEDs, microphones, monitors and so on. And another nice bonus feature is the inclusion of the Manfrotto style quick release plate. This allows you to use the same plate to mount your camera on the 501 style head. You can use the app to control the joystick, reset the position of the gimbal or choose between three modes. All follow, panning, follow and locking. Apart from that, it's also possible to change different settings such as motor dynamics for adjusting the power of the motors, follow settings for adjusting the follow dead zone and following speed, both for the panning and the tilting axis. The joystick settings for adjusting the speed on both panning and tilting. It's also possible to reverse both panning and tilting axes. The horizontal calibration for adjusting the roll axis. If it's for example tilting in one direction. The auto rotation mode rate for adjusting the speed of both panning and tilting. You can also adjust the camera timer and restore device defaults. It's also possible to upgrade the firmware through the app. So the only negative I found on this gimbal is that like I mentioned before the micro vibration vibrations can be bothersome at some points but then again my setup doesn't really get into trouble with that so for me it doesn't really matter it really depends on what kind of setup you're using and otherwise you will need to do some minor post stabilization apart from that I didn't encounter any negative points on this gimbal so that's really nice congratulations with this high-end nicely designed gimbal I really enjoy shooting with it uh, so my conclusion is that the Feiyutech A2000 is a pretty solid stabilizer for its price and can carry most mirrorless cameras and some lighter DSLRs. The stabilization is good but do know that the setup is very important. So if you're looking for an affordable single-handed gimbal then definitely consider the Feiyutech A2000. Alright so that's it for this video I hope you enjoyed it. If you did give this video a like also subscribe to the channel for more and definitely hit that bell icon so you're getting notified when I upload new videos and check out our website we have a bunch to offer for filmmakers and motion graphics artists and much more and then I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye.